Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be breaking some myths and misconceptions spread about being a YouTuber by other YouTubers. This will be a mostly unscripted video, so I am sorry for all the uhs and ums. Do you want free 2-day shipping, access to exclusive items and deals, and more? If so, check out the link in the video's description to check out and sign up for your 30-day free trial of Amazon Prime. So in front of me is a bulleted list of ideas, and I will attempt to work out what my typing brain meant when he typed out all of these points. Firstly, running a YouTube channel is a business and a lot of work. You may not think of it at first, but once you go and, you know, look deeper into uh, how much time you're spent in recording, rendering, editing, and all that shit, it is a very big business. And frankly, it's a... It's a big business because you look at it and you go, well, is it really? And then you realize, oh my god, it is a huge business that takes forever to do everything. And it kind of sucks. Um, plus, on top of that, you have taxes and you have to work with other companies. So for the taxes part, you have to deal with your Schedule C uh, when you file your taxes and all that shit. Uh, and that, for me, is fun. I like doing that. Um, but it's one of those legal things where you have to do where like you have to do it. And if you don't do it, you could be audited for not reporting those taxes. Even if you didn't make enough to have to pay taxes, uh, a lot of people will completely avoid filing the taxes and then may uh, be fined for not filing those taxes in the end. And that's not good because then you're going to end up paying more than what you needed to or maybe you didn't need to pay anything at all. And just because you didn't file taxes, uh, you A, didn't know and B, were kind of careless. So as far as working with other companies, um, you yourself are a brand, you are a company, and you have to represent that brand to other companies, such as Elgato for myself. I have to represent Elgato. And every ad spot that I do for them, or say for this video, Amazon Prime, every ad spot that I do for them, they are trusting that I will not make their company look bad, which in turn puts a strain on yourself because you are you are essentially representing these companies in the most professional manner. You are going to them and saying, hey, if you trust me with your product, I will make a good video about that product. Or I will make a good quality video about that product, whether that be my true opinions about the product or a paid-off opinion. Now, I'm not going to go into detail of, you know, you know, opinion versus, you know what you're paid to say, I always think that it's better to say your opinion and tell the company what they can fix, because if you just tell them that their product sucks, they're going to look at you and say, well, you suck, we're not dealing with you anymore. But if you look at them and say, guess what, your product sucks, but here is why, and here's how you can fix it, it's easily the best way to get a company to sponsor you again, possibly with a better product that you helped build. So the second point is your channel is absolutely nothing until you hit that magical thousand subscriber milestone. Now, don't set that as your first milestone. Absolutely not. Set your first milestone small, maybe 10, 50 subscribers, and then set it to 100. 500 and then the thousand because if you start out by saying oh I want to hit a thousand subscribers by March and it's early February which you know it, it's kind of a bad example because it's like early March right now or sorry mid-March right now so let's say that by the end of December 
2017, and this may date the video when you're watching it, but say by the early December 2017, and you started your channel in January 2017, say you want to get to 1,000 subscribers in one year. It's not going to happen. Simply because most people experience burnout much faster than uh, other businesses. Because other businesses, you have other ways to keep you busy. With YouTube, you have, you know, all of your paperwork, all your analytics that you're buried in. And that's a problem. Because many channels helping you grow, and I put air quotes around those, um, like uh, the channel YouTube Creators and Think Media TV, uh, tell you that you can do anything and that you'll grow very quickly. And that's just wrong. It's a very long and hard road to climb, and it only gets harder. There is no question about that. It It is a very, very tough hike. Like, on the hike scale for Europe, it would be a black mountain. Because YouTube, or running a business in general, is one of those mountains that you climb after you've practiced and practiced, but most people just jump right into it. Now, I'm not saying that you can't start a YouTube channel for fun and make some money on the side, of course, but it's going to be hard, and it's going to take a lot of work. So, don't get into this thinking that you're just going to be able to waltz in, make a couple videos, make a million dollars, and then waltz out. I'm sorry, but that is not how it's going to work. I... I personally thought that I may be able to make 50 bucks a month because my friends were making 50 bucks a month, but sadly, that is not how it works. It doesn't matter who who looks at you and tells you that, they are incorrect and wrong. And I hate to put a Donald Trump pun in here, but they are wrong. So, number three is becoming a tech YouTuber is hard, but becoming a gaming channel is absolutely the worst. Because everyone can record a gameplay now. So let me go ahead and give you some tips and tricks. Um, the first part will be for tech tubers, and then the last part will be for uh, the gamers. So becoming a tech tuber, you can also integrate this into being a gamer. Because my channel, personally, is around gaming and tech to make you stronger and you better as a channel, as a YouTuber, as a person, as a brand. And I think that is amazing because I can hit two audiences just with one idea. Because you can use tech in gaming, and that is what so many creators who are telling you what you can and cannot do, or what you should and should not do... They are wrong because YouTubers like Think Media TV say that you should just do one thing on your channel. But I believe that your channel should be yours. So, the biggest thing for tech tubers is if you're really not that well off, you can buy products from Amazon on sale and then talk about them and then return them to Amazon. Maybe they do suck, maybe they are broken. You say what they are and then return them to Amazon. A more shady way to do it is to go through and report them all as broken and then not pay the return shipping and then get the full amount of money back. Amazon may raise an eyebrow to this, but they most likely won't do anything. And if you use the link in the video's description, you get 30 days of free Prime 2-day shipping. So you can make videos back to back to back uh, using the video, using the link in the video's description, you can make several videos about several products uh, if you use that two-day uh, free Prime shipping. So, another thing is join product review groups. Um, I will leave one link in the video's description that I go to a lot, um, and they will send you, or you have to sign up and register for it, um, but they will send you uh, products for low to no cost, and then you can return them if you don't like them, but usually they're such a low cost that you're paying for them, or no cost at all, uh, that you can simply just buy them and, you know, not blink, because you paid $3 for a $30 product, 
and say you do recommend it, you can then use affiliate linkage that I'll talk about later in the video, and you can sell that product for that company and get a piece of that pie. So I think that is great so that you are still making money off of that video, and you know, all you're doing is essentially looking at a product and saying, hey, this is my opinion on it, but it is going to be hard because you are one of like 5 million YouTubers who also do the exact same thing. Most who are much, much more popular than you. Um, for example, Linus Tech Tips, uh, Austin Evans, uh, TLD Today, um, Jonathan Morrison, I think, um, I think Chris Perillo still does, uh, tech reviews, I can't remember. I haven't watched him in a long time, though. Uh, so, yeah, and then for both gamers and for tech tubers, get decent equipment out of the starting gate. Most of the time, your phone will be good enough for a webcam and a, um, and a camera, so simply get a good, uh, microphone. You can use the microphone that comes with the headphones on the iPhone 7 or on your Galaxy S7. You can use those headphones and uh, use the microphone that's already in it. Or you can buy a cheap lavalier kit. I'll have one linked in the video's description of, you know, it's a really cheap kit. It's around, uh, I think it's 40 bucks. And it's an external recorder, which I'm actually recording into right now. It's an external recorder, and on top of that, it's also a lavalier microphone, so you can record uh, while you're walking around and doing stuff. Uh, so that that's something to keep in mind. So maybe set aside $150 to start your YouTube channel, and you can have great audio, a great video, and you will be perfectly fine to start your YouTube channel. But you do need good equipment to be seen on YouTube because if you have really shitty audio, um, you're not going to be found on YouTube because more people will not watch your, your content and will leave your videos sooner if you have really crappy audio. So now what I have right in front of me is a $150 microphone but frankly, this is much, much more expensive than anything anyone needs to use. Like, I'm inside of my closet right now recording, and it's, like, you don't need to have this kind of setup unless you're doing, like, a podcast that's professional and stuff. But if you're doing that, I think you have a different set of requirements that would be given to you by your fellow podcast members. Um. So, uh, the fourth thing is... Upload in a minimum of 720p, 60fps. There is no, no excuse to be doing 480p in 2017 or later. Do not use anything under 720p, 60fps. Now, I have kind of a funny story with that because my tech demo for, or sorry, my voice demo will actually be uploaded in 480p, but that's because I have to upload in 480p for uh, Fiverr. So Fiverr only accepts video files under a certain size, and uh, even 720p 30fps was not enough for them. So I had to do uh, 480p at, uh, at 30fps, <laughs> so that the video file size could be enough. So, that kind of sucks. But for YouTube, anything under 60 FPS is not acceptable anymore. And it, YouTube is now compressing videos more and more, so there's much, much more artifacting in the uh, higher-end uh, videos, such as on, say, MKBHD's videos. You can tell that there's higher artifacting because he's uploading in 4K 30 FPS. So it's compressing that video down to more or less a 720p video file that is then streaming at about 22 FPS. So what he's doing is he's uploading a really large file and then 
YouTube has to then compress that file so that it's super small so that it'll work with their streaming services. So if you upload a small file to begin with, whether that be 720p 60fps or 1080 60fps, but frankly right now don't worry about 4K or 10 or sorry, 4K or 2K yet because frankly and 2K is 1440p. Don't worry about those because of the compression on YouTube. Worry about 60 FPS, 720p, or uh, 1080p. And the P is progressive. Never use interlaced for any of your videos because interlaced uh, draws each line of the video and sometimes can be choppy and a lot of people will click off of a video as fast as they clicked on it for interlaced videos because it just doesn't work well in today's society. So, number five, be yourself, but also remember to be someone else also. Be yourself and be honest with your audience, but at the same time, realize that you are probably copying someone else elsewhere because of how much content is on YouTube right now. It's impossible to look at the content that's on YouTube and say, Oh, well, that is original, that is not, that is original, that is not. It's completely impossible to do because there is so much content being made every second on YouTube. There is about, what, one terabyte of video uploaded every day to YouTube. I'm pretty sure. I'll, I'll leave um, a video mark, uh, like a text of the correct information, but I'm pretty sure last I knew is one terabyte a day of video is uploaded to YouTube. Um, so that is one of the biggest things is that you are fighting your, you know, two or three gigabytes of video is fighting with that one terabyte of, of other people's videos. So there may be a million videos uploaded in one day and you are one of that million. Plus, then there's about 14 quintillion videos in back storage, whether on YouTube or other sites, and you are just one of those quintillion views. So, people are one click away from you, yet you are about a, quint a quintillion videos away from them. So, you have to remember that. You have to uh, audit yourself so that you are in front of the audience no matter what. And that's why better quality as far as audio, video, and uh, making yourself more presentable, if you are doing something like tutorials or whatnot, making yourself more presentable is a much needed strategy on YouTube, rather than just going out and making content blindly. So, if you're, number six is, if you're going to make content, you might as well make some money with it, because you can't live on air. So you might as well make some money while you are making content. So, uh, and that's the kind of first point in that if you're going to make, if you're going to take your time to make content, you might as well make some money. So the first step is to get YouTube verified. YouTube no longer has this as a default step in their process. So you need to go to your YouTube dashboard, also known as the creator studio, Click on your Creator Studio, go in to your YouTube dashboard, click on Channel, and then click on Get Verified. Once you verify your channel, all they have to do is send you a text message, and it, your channel will be verified. You can then upload longer than 15 minutes. You can also then partner your channel with sub-networks, or sorry, networks like YouTube MCNs. And on top of that, you can also then partner yourself with YouTube directly if you are making a bunch of views per day. Um, so go ahead and while you're at it, enroll into the monetization program because while you are getting set up, while you're applying for YouTube MCNs, you might as well be raking in a couple cents because if those YouTube MCNs go to your dashboard and see, oh, he's already making money, he's good for us, he or she, my bad. Um, 
they're good for us. We might as well add them to our network and we will get that revenue and share it with them. Which is the next point. Join an MCM that MCN that offers a low split. Remember, 50% automatically goes to YouTube. So if you make $5, you are only getting $2.30-ish of it. So you, as a creator, have to partner with a YouTube MCN that won't take you for all of your money. For example, do not sign up with Freedom. No matter what anyone tells you, do not go with Freedom. If you have a chance, go with Scale Lab Gaming uh, as a last resort. But I will leave a I will leave several links in the video's description to YouTube channel YouTube MCNs that I recommend. Uh, sorry, I'm a little flustered. I I get this way whenever I'm ranting in a video. So yes, join a YouTube MCN that lo offers a low split. And uh, check uh, the YouTube channel, the YouTube MCNs that I recommend in the links in the video's description. Uh, the next point is make an Amazon and eBay affiliate account. Like I talked about earlier, if you are a YouTuber and you're making tech videos, making content is easy for you. Because you can make money off of every aim every Amazon search or every eBay search. It does not matter. You are so easy to make money or it is so easy for you to make money on YouTube because if you review a product people most likely are going to look at it and probably buy it to prove you wrong whether that you were right or sorry that you were wrong that the product is bad or good or that you were right that the product is good or bad so because of how people react to that, they will always go to prove you wrong. So that is one of the biggest things that you can do to make money on YouTube is sign up for an eBay and Amazon affiliate accounts. Finally, reach out to smaller companies on Twitter or email and ask them to send you a sample of their product for more exposure for their company and yours. Ask them to post like a little picture on their website showing that you talked about their video and have, you know, have them have your thumbnail and then you can talk to them and have them post a link to your video so that uh, they are seeing, you know, your review and all of their customers are seeing your review as well. And then sign up with them to have an affiliate link so that you can receive money from every order that is made. It's one of those things that it takes a little bit of time and a lot of email writing skills, but don't walk up to companies and say, hey, give me free products. No, don't do that. Write them a nice email every single time. Don't use a template. I found that using a template, I got a few write-backs from companies and they said, this is a template. We will not respond to you until you write us an actual email. I wrote them an actual email, and then they sent me a product. So that is how easy it is to get products on Amazon and eBay. Since it's all integrated, all they have to do is click a button, write it off, and it'll be sent to your eBay uh, shipping address or Amazon shipping address. It doesn't matter. And to these companies, a few cents lost is better because they can spend $5 on advertising to you and then say $500 that you would get out of their sales as long as they get $5,000. So it's all very uh, cut and dry as far as, you know, you take what you, what you deserve and then they get what they want. So... Uh, next, uh, number seven, ratings are absolutely useless. Throw them away while you have the chance. Don't, don't even worry about them. Honestly, I was just moving on to the next part. No, um, I, I just wrote out this whole point. Uh, disregard the rating system because if people dislike, they're helping your video. If they like the video, they're helping it as well. So it doesn't matter. I honestly 
as I said, just recommend disabling them entirely so people focusing on the content instead of the other's opinions on the content. For example, no matter what I upload, there is one jackass that dislikes my video. I don't know why, but it doesn't matter because every single video, he dislikes it, he or she dislikes it for no reason. They don't tell me why and it doesn't matter because I have ratings disabled. So users can't see that so they have to watch the video itself. They can't look at the ratings and say, oh well 500 people dislike this video even though the content may be sound just because it disagrees with someone's point of view, they dislike it. So honestly, it's not a good system and YouTube needs to have it disabled by default. But you can simply go into every video under the advanced settings and uncheck the allow users to view ratings checkbox. They can still leave ratings and it will still help your videos grow, but they don't see them, only you can see them in the back end. So uh, number eight, even after getting criticism, just keep creating. Use that creative, use that criticism if it's creative so that you can uh, grow yourself and grow your channel. Like if it's saying, oh, your audio needs to be padded, then you need to lower your audio. If they say, oh, well, you need to boost your audio, you need to turn up the volume for your audio. If they say your video is a little grainy, maybe you need to change the settings in your camera. All of these things are good creative criticism. However, bad creative, bad creative criticism is you're a fag, you're a faggot, you're fat, you're horrible, you're shit, you're nothing. All of that you can just throw out the fucking window because you are in control. You are the one who makes the videos. You are the one who sits behind a camera and does the shit. They don't know anything. So prove it to them by continuing to make content. Continue to prove that their words don't shake you. No matter what you do, do not let the criticism take you down. Make more content, even if everyone hates you, make content because you want to, because it is fun, and because that one person who comments how much they love your creations because of them, because of those few people. Do it for the few who love you. So I'm sure that I forgot uh, a few things, but let's make this a discussion instead of an echo chamber. Echo, echo, echo. I could have added that in post, but I didn't because I'm an idiot. Uh, tell me down in the comments uh, what you think are good ideas and how you run your channel. If you have one, if not, start one. It's pretty easy. As I said in this video, it's going to be a long hike, but at the end, it's one of the most rewarding hikes that you will ever do, ever. As always, I want to thank you all for watching, and I hopefully will see you all next time.